pitch. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, back to the garage. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. So as you would have saw at the beginning of the video, we had to pull another head. Um, I used the engine hoist over here for dramatic effect. Um, it would go up just long enough I could hook the head up in that funky way I did for you. Just uh, goofing a little bit. But uh, anyway, I pulled the head off of the KFX 400 because we have no valve lash whatsoever. Um, when I put the, these are shimmed. There's a little shim um, underneath the cup that goes over top of the valve, you know, before the camera, you know, that's what the cam rides on. It hits this cup and then there's a shim. Anyhow, we had zero valve lash. So I've done a little research, not as much as I need to. We may need to get new valves. Um, the valves may just be wore out. I'm not really sure if we can just reshim them. Um, if any of you guys know about these older four-wheelers, let me know. One thing we do need to address either way, as you can see, this one keeper on this valve right here, which I believe is an intake valve. No, nah, that's an exhaust valve. The exhaust valve is actually coming out. So that would partially explain why we didn't have any compression or why it was backfiring. But we did have it backfire out of the intake as well, so definitely need to figure out what to do there um if i can get away with just fixing that keeper and reshimming it that's what i'd like to do because well it's a 2003 four-wheeler and it's fun to ride but it probably is not worth going through a whole lot of hassle to get it back up and running so anyway tonight um like i said i pulled that head off but i would like to pull the fan shroud here off of the truck off of caitlin because as you can see it is probably beyond repair and when i say probably i mean absolutely beyond repair so in order to pull the fan shroud there's the wiring harness here for the fan because it is electronically controlled and then there's a bolt on this side and one on the opposite side um and then the whole thing should lift out but in order to do that we have to remove the fan now we could actually break this one to get it out but I'm going to take the fan out and show you guys how to do it all in the same process because we will have to have the fan out in order to get the new one in. Another thing, we pulled the head on Caitlin as you guys saw. So I'm hoping to hear back from the machine shop here Monday or Tuesday about that. Also Monday, I'm hoping that work slows down and I'm able to go get the race truck from Muldoon's. But as you can see, the block of Caitlin is just god awful looking. So this is all just the surface rust and as you can see some of it will wipe off here because I did spray it down the other night when I noticed it was doing this. Um, this is something I didn't think about. You know, we pulled the head off, got the head out of here. Well, outside it was, you know, warm and then in the garage it was cold and so forth, you know, so on and so forth, you know, condensation. We're getting a little bit of surface rust on there. We're getting surface rust in the cylinders. So I'm just going to take some scotch Brite, clean that up. And then what I think I'm going to do, and it was actually something my father had suggested. I sprayed it down with some penetrating oil to keep it, you know, good for now so it's not too rusty. But I think what I'm going to do is actually take some motor oil since it's a little thicker, rub some motor oil on there, get a nice film. And something I was thinking is maybe put some saran wrap on it and put that all over the deck surface to keep any air and moisture out of it and just keep that oil in there so we have a nice surface to go back to when our head arrives and 
just that way we're ready to go. I do have to order parts. I'm going to probably get a whole top end kit. I don't know if that comes with banjo bolts because we need the banjo bolt for the rear back there. We need um, ones for either side of our fuel uh, return there. Our, that is actually our fleece block we have for our fuel return since we have a fast on this truck. And then also there's a banjo bolt on the fuel rail itself that feeds into the return. So we're going to start there. We're going to get the fan out, get the shroud out, and then we're going to tackle this uh, little rust problem we got. So the first step on this is we got to loosen our fan up. So you can unbolt it, you know, from back here. I'm trying to remember, there's like three bolts you can get to and all that. But to just take the fan assembly off itself, we need to get that nut. Now, how it's designed is so when the engine is rotating, it actually is kind of tightening down. It's actually kind of tightening down on the nut, so that way the fan has no chance of spinning off. So if I take my uh, pair of channel locks, because I can't actually fit a wrench in there. All right, either the pulley spins or the fan spins, or well, I guess you'd say both spin. As you can see, it's kind of hard. You can't just take it off with a wrench um, just to unscrew the fan from the hub there. So that's where the air chisel comes in handy. And this actually works on pretty much any vehicle with a fan. What you're going to do is you're going to hook your compressor up to your air chisel. We're going to put this against the nut. And we're actually going to kind of shock the nut loose. After that, we should be able to actually spin the fan itself. And then the nut will come with it because it's not locked on that pulley anymore. Um, just a little tip for you. You know, that way you don't need a puller. You don't need a, you know, or not a puller. But you don't need a special tool. You just hit it with the air chisel um, on an edge of the flat and you should be able to lock it loose. So let's see how we make out. Um, this is very hard to try and set the camera up for you to see, so hopefully you do. But we'll just take our chisel, put it on the edge of the flat here. All right, a little pressure. GoPro fell down while I was beating that off. So as you can see, everything spins together. But if I hold this pulley, now the fan spins independent and it's unthreading. So now we'll get our shroud off. All right, it's off. Oh, what I lied to you earlier is actually three bolts: two on this side, one on the other side. I should have known that from when we put the electric fans in the race truck. Actually, we don't even need to take this bolt out because this thing's so fucking jacked up. But, oh well. This, this pulley keeps spinning on me. If you do this, you will probably have your, your belt on, your serpentine belt. So when the serpentine belt's on there, obviously you'll have enough resistance that you won't have to hold the pulley. And there we are. So, to be able to just pull. Seems like this side's a little jammed up. Ugh. I don't know why that would be jammed in there. It's not like anything fell on it and forced it in that slot. There ain't no bolt. I didn't realize this when we started. I couldn't pull the shroud out because 
this lower radiator seal is actually connected to it. So we need to pop these three pins off. Which would have probably been easier if we did it before we unbolted it. So now you guys know. All right. So that one broke the shroud, which is fine. It was broke anyway. All right, so the radiator shroud actually is connected to the lower radiator seal. This is the upper radiator seal here, this part that says heavy duty. But anyway, now that that's all taken care of, I can undo the fan again. My mistake, there was four of those little clips, so now it's pull out. Come on. The shroud's out and broke but it was already a little brittle to begin with. Um, anyhow, there was actually four of these clips down here, um, not three. So as you can see, you have, to, you have to pull them both at the same time, even if you could snake the fan up, because the wiring harness for the fan actually runs through the shroud itself. So we'll have to get the, sh the wiring harness out and then we can get rid of the shroud. Hopefully there's a part number on it so I can look it up. We have to slide that out. Yeah, there we go. All right, now our fan is disconnected from the shroud. Just slides in that little groove there. We're good. We ran into more stupid shit with this little fan than we did with that whole fucking head job. Um, just, but yeah. So there's the radiator shroud. There's our fan, which, uh, like I said, you gotta you kind of gotta pull them both at the same time just so you can get the wiring out. But it's not like you have the room to do otherwise. So we'll just slide the fan here under Veronica or under Caitlin. I'm getting my girls mixed up. They don't like when you do that. That's uh, ooh, that could be bad news. And here's our what's left of our shroud. I had actually thought about making one of these out of aluminum. Um, but I don't know that I have the material or the time to really do it right. I mean, that's a little more complex than I had anticipated. So that is certainly not gonna happen. There looks to be our part numbers. AA222710-3986. Well, that'll make looking this thing up a little easier. And then there's a 5505659438 no, AG. I don't, one of them's a fucking part number. Well, I don't know why they make part numbers so goddamn confusing. You'll have two part numbers for the same part, but it's on a different, you know, different vehicle, but it's the same damn thing. Chrysler just needs to make up their mind as far as part numbers goes. Part numbers that were on the fan shroud are absolutely useless. I typed them in on the Google, a couple Mopar parts sites. Didn't get a goddamn thing. So I had to resort to typing in model year, make, all that shit, which this is a Ram. This isn't a Dodge, it's a Ram. Which that, uh, we're not even gonna start on that. That just irritates the hell out of me. Anyhow, I had to go to a site, type in the VIN. Oh, that reminds me. Anyway, um, type in the VIN, get the part. So I actually ended up getting it off of the eBay because it was like half the price of any other website I could find. And you know the dealer's gonna be like 300 bucks. I think this was like 70. So it should be here in like a week and a half, which she seems very far out. I would expect it a lot sooner than that. But speaking of VIN, that brings me to something else. 
So, the other day in the mail, I actually got two important safety recalls. Um, one is for our 2010 Dodge Ram 2500. And one's for our 2012 Ram 2500. Oh, that boils. I, I just, I just can't, I can't stand that. The, the, the fact that they... You know, even on the screen when you turn the key on, and if I had the race truck here, I'd show you. When you turn the screen on on that, the center screen in the middle there, it says Dodge. On this truck, it says Ram. Which, yeah, whatever. But the only place this truck says Dodge is actually in on the center console. And you know what, I'll show you. So on Caitlin, it just says Dodge right there. That's the only place you will ever find Dodge on this truck and from what I understand it was just because like they had them like they just had too many of those damn things all the newer trucks say Ram or I'm not even sure honestly but that centerpiece there in the dash on this truck shows the Ram logo it says Ram on the 10 I think it's Ram logo I can't remember but on the race truck it says Dodge but it <laughs> it just irritates me I mean, I know they want to make like two different brands and all that kind of bullshit, but it's the same damn truck. You're telling me, you know, like 2010. So the race truck's a pretty rare truck. It's the last year of the Dodge Ram. So I probably shouldn't have, you know, cut it up and be doing what we're going to be doing with it because I'm not going to be able to get a Dodge Ram anymore. They're all going to be just Rams. It's so fucking stupid. Alright, so sorry about that little tangent there. It just irritates me, especially when you're looking for parts. Because, like, half the websites, you gotta look for Ram parts. Half the web websites, you gotta look for Dodge parts. So it just, it just irritates me that you even have to worry about that. Anyhow, back to our important recalls. Um, the brake transmission shift interlock, the BTSI locking pin on your vehicle may become stuck in the open position. The ability to shift the transmission out of park position without the key in the ignition or a brake pedal application increases the potential for an unintended vehicle rollaway that may result in a vehicle crash or injury. Um, so on the 10, if you guys have been with the channel and you remember, we actually shaved that thing off so that way we could, could get our key out because it was keeping us from getting the key out from us seeing it neutral. And I'll be honest, I have actually noticed this in Caitlin that I can just put her in drive. And honestly, I don't mind it. I actually kind of like it because you actually still have to pull it forward towards you and then go down. Um, we should be able to put the truck in drive right now without pushing the brake pedal, which I'll show you here in a second. Needless to say, I don't know if this is a recall that we're going to get done. Though, saying that, getting it done on the race truck may be interesting. Um, if we took it in there and had them try and do the recall, I don't, I, I don't even know what a dealer would do about that. They'd probably just get pissed off they were bringing something like that in. Especially once they took it apart. Well, the guy probably wouldn't even look at it. He'd probably just throw the switch away. But, uh... I don't know. That's certainly an idea. What do you guys think? Should we take the race truck in and get the recall done? That we already deleted? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So anyway, let's try this out on Caitlin. Like I said, I know it does it, so it's not really going to be anything, any big surprise. All right. Uh-oh. Caitlin's in drive. She's running away. Oh, no. The fucking thing's half, to, half disassembled. Well, anyway, so that that's that's what the recall is. It's that you can move the shift lever without touching the brake pedal, but... If you're not a moron, it's not an issue. So, survival of the fittest, I guess. But I guess they're all, I guess they're all tense about that kind of shit after that. What was it, a Fiat or whatever ran over that Star Trek kid? But uh, whatever. I'm not getting it done on Kane. That's for damn sure. So. Now we're going to move on. We're going to clean the block. I think my game plan is to 
just I'm gonna wipe it down like I said I sprayed it last night after I noticed the rust and then we'll scotch bright it and then I'm gonna get some saran wrap which I'll have to check because I might not even have saran wrap and just we'll saran wrap it so that way we don't get any more rust because as you can see the cylinder walls they're getting you know some surface rust on them and I just I'd rather have it cleaned up ready to go and not have to worry about it because if you guys know anything about surface rust the longer you let it sit the worse it'll get and yeah this probably isn't going to be exposed long enough for that to be a problem but better safe than sorry right so let's get to it Block all cleaned up, I scotch braided the whole thing, then I stoned the whole deck surface here. Um, I did wipe out the cylinders and all that. I will be taking a vacuum and vacuuming them out because if this whole saran wrap deal I got going on doesn't work, we're going to have to do this again. So I figured why well, do it twice. Now I put the saran wrap on, what I did was I actually wiped the whole thing down with a paper towel with oil on it so the whole thing should be oiled and then I put the saran wrap on there to hopefully seal any moisture out and just you know keep the oil on there so hopefully it doesn't rust up again I don't know if this will work I think it should but who knows but if anything it'll just keep shit from getting in any of the coolant passages or anything like that so that's that's kind of uh how I decided to clean it up. I don't know if that is technically the right way or the best way. If you guys know a better way, let me know. But it came up. I mean, everything looks good. It looks like it should seal right and all that. So I'm happy with it. I'd throw a new gasket on there and uh, bolt the head down right now if we had it. But we don't. So guys, I hope you liked the video tonight. Um, we did a little head work on the four-wheeler. Well, we didn't do any head work. We just pulled the head off. So I got to look into that just so I can get that thing ripping again. Like to uh, definitely get the ride in that thing. Uh, the Polaris I have, the utility four wheeler, they're fun, but they're hard to get stuck. And kind of being worried about getting stuck is half the fun of riding, especially me. I'm the guy that goes out like I'm not getting dirty and muddy today. I'm the first one in the mud pit. So. Why I always end up saying that when we go out, I don't know. I always bring a spare set of clothes anyway. But uh, I definitely want to get back into riding the sport four-wheeler in places it was never intended for, like creek beds and shit like that. But uh, other than that, we got the fan and the fan shroud off. I ordered the fan shroud for the truck, which we will put on after the head's back in so we don't risk busting that up in the meantime. And we got the deck surface. And we got the deck surface of our engine all cleaned up and pretty. Hopefully it stays that way. I'm hoping this saran wrap, you know, keeps that oil in there and keeps the moisture from getting in at it. If we missed any spots, I don't know. I've never heard of people doing this. Maybe they do and just don't say it. I have no idea. But I figured it was worth a try. So guys, if you enjoyed this upload, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Hoping to get the race truck that. Hoping to get the race truck back on Monday. So, you guys, I'll see you on the next one.